Hello everyone, this is Shamsi and welcome to part two of our serialized guide to starting out in Dual Universe. Today we'll be talking about our talent tree. And so without any further ado, let's cut to the part of the starting out live stream where we discuss our talents. Uh, to talk about our talent tree, now, what talents we're going to want to get right off the bat. So for the cores, we have everything we want already in the queue and already bought. So now we can ignore this. In fact, I am going to take these off for now and come back and put them in later so that my queue is nice and organized. So <clears throat> we need container proficiency in order to be able to unlock primary container augmentation. What does all that mean? Primary container augmentation increases the range Per point by 250 meters at which I'm able to select a container in the game and have it exist in lieu of my uh, personal inventory. So I only have, if I max it out, maybe I don't know, five, six thousand liters of room in my nano pack. But a large container will have something like 180,000 liters of room. So if I'm, you know, a thousand meters below the ground and I'm mining, I want to be able to link back to that container. But if I leave my maximum container range, my link breaks and I can then only use my nano pack. So, you know, you have to ferry back to within range and move or back, you know, five, six thousand meters at a time, which isn't ideal. On my current main character for mining, I have this at level four which increases it in total by a thousand. And I have, uh, I think, two levels of the advanced version of this skill, which increases maximum range for container link by an extra 10% per point in the level. So at the moment, I have something like 1.6, or so 1,600 uh, meters, 1 1.6 kilometers, that I can be away from my container and still mine directly into it, which is fantastic. The other benefit of doing that is if you have a mining ship, and I'll be uh, creating a guide on how to, to make a mining ship, you're able to hit escape, force respawn, and respawn on a resurrection pad that is on your mining ship. So if you've mined you know, 1,500 meters below the ground, you don't have to mine back out or try to find your way back out through your tunnels. You just hit escape. If your nano pack is empty, you don't lose anything. Escape, force respawn, instantly back on your ship. It's very useful. Now, that's it for uh, containers. So most of what we want are here in mining and industry. There are many other areas of, of the game. And as I said, it takes something like seven years, I think I've heard thrown around to, to keep, train everything. So you really do want to specialize. But for now, we're going for a bit of a jack of all trades um, approach so that we can function on our own and build anything we want in the game. So that's it for our architect. Uh, we don't want uh, to, to improve our tools yet. We don't want to improve our avatar rate yet, although you can either increase your speed, your jump height, and, uh, and other things like that. The next thing we want is terraforming. So we want to increase the range of our digging by a little bit, and then what a dig tool optimization does is it increases the radius at which you can dig. So if I have my dig tool out here and I look at the ground and I mine, it makes a very small hole. But if I hold control and scroll my mouse wheel all the way out, it makes a very large hole a very deep hole, which is ideal for mining. So at the start, we're going to take our scanner tool out, our tool for finding ore, but with it, we can only dig down in very cramped, horrible, narrow tunnels like this. So we're going to use our dig tool to dig, nice wide open caverns, and then periodically switch back to our scanner tool in order to find ore. I'm going to go through how to find ore as well when we are done with the talents. What a dig tool optimization does, if I train, say, uh, two levels of it for now, 
is it makes our, it's already in the queue, is it makes our dig tool sphere. So if I hold scroll on my mouse wheel, our, our the, the digging tool that we have out with our scanner, I cannot change its size. If I invest points into those talents, I am able to increase the size of the sphere, which makes digging much easier. Um, and then other than operations range and dig tool optimization and also the speed at which you dig, so extra 10% speed is noticeable, uh, although that requires level three operations range, uh, which does take some time, but it's all right, I'll queue it anyway. Um, uh, we're done with uh, the terraforming window. Then comes the mining window. Mining um, is what helps you find the ore easier. Now, these points here, I'm just going to quickly put points in here. Um, don't know why. Why not? And queue the rest. Uh, this increases the max range, range at which you're able to mine ore. Detectors are what you're able to pinpoint ore out of when your um, uh, scanner has brought you to within a certain range of that uh, ore. So we want this to be uh, at level three, but we're going to train the first two points and queue the third one. A mining optimization uh, makes it so that you mine faster. I am going to queue two points of it. Uh, but then scanner upgrades are also very important. So we're going to train two levels of it and queue the third level. And what that does is if I take out my scanner tool again, you'll see that this gray bar has moved up to 280. And in fact, what I'm going to train next instead of container pr uh, proficiency. Uh, actually, no, I'm just going to leave that to train normally. But I've already got four days of training in my queue. So do bear in mind it does take a while. And then finally, we want um, uh, some points in Dredger later. Dredger is the upgraded version of Miner. So you know, we want... Uh, one point in here we want uh, to queue this talent as well so what our detector tool does is if you can hear those pings once we're close to ore we scan the area around us like this in a zigzag pattern with this detector and when we are looking at a node of ore that we can mine it starts making a buzzing noise and gives us a visual visual indication that we're currently pointing at ore. Uh, this skill increases the cone of that detector. Very useful. So, you know, four percent increased uh, scanning range. Again, very useful. Mining efficiency, more ore extracted. Currently, we're not going to to go with that. You want to get this eventually, obviously, but. Uh, uh, more ore for now is less useful than being able to find the ore uh, effectively. Although you want to get that as soon as possible after you have your initial standing up on your own two feet skills. Uh, detector efficiency gives your detector quicker response time. Uh, very useful uh, finding ore. Going to train two levels of it. And then scanning auto ping. Not all that useful, but it's very quick. So, oh, wait, no, it's not very quick. Or scanning upgrades. Well, given that it's prerequisite is scanning upgrades for, and we're going to want scanning upgrades for anyway, let's keep that in our queue. It hasn't increased it by all that much. <clears throat> so there's Dredger, there's Miner. We have our Architect done. We have Terraformer, we have Miner, we have Dredger, and we have points in Inventory Management. And um, down in Stock Control, Again, this is where you can have the upgraded version of the primary container link to increase by 10%. These are actually very useful, these two skills down here. They will take a while to train. So this one, for instance, takes nano pack optimization five as a prerequisite. That takes like five days. But what it does, it makes it so that when you put down a container and I put say 500 tons of ore in that container, that weight is reduced by 5%. 
Similarly, if I put 100 tons of space fuel into my fuel tanks, if I've put the fuel tanks down, the, that weight goes down by 5% per level. So if you train your level four in each of those, you can reduce it by 20%, which when you're you know, limited in the amount of weight you can haul is very significant. So that's that. Um, that gets our mining kind of off the ground, makes us you know, able to function. The next thing we're gonna want is um, some piloting skills. And specifically, we want to have um, our engines warm up faster. Uh, some fuel efficiency is nice and it's also a prerequisite for some other skills. We want to get here as quickly as possible. If you remember, as our altitude increased, the efficiency of our engines uh, increased in terms of fuel consumption, but decreased in terms of power. The power goes down the higher up you get. And if you find yourself struggling to leave atmosphere, you should um, uh, train this skill so you have more thrust in higher atmosphere. It does require atmospheric fuel efficiency at number five, which takes a while. But, you know, the sooner you get this skill, uh, the more money you'll save long term in fuel. Um, uh, aileron pilot. Uh, ailerons are very useful in terms of uh, getting you uh, off the um, uh, atmosphere, but we're going to skip past that for now. Um, handling makes it so that any fuel tank we put down here, for instance, has 20% more capacity, but say, you know, <clears throat> over here, atmospheric engine handling, it's 10% more max thrust <clears throat> to an engine that your character puts down regardless of who's flying it. So people pay for people with the skill to come and place their engines for them, or for instance, say, take the engine away and then hit backspace to undo that action and replace the engine. In so doing, apply 10% more max thrust per point <clears throat> uh, with this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but uh, before all that, you don't want uh, to start off with that, obviously. Adjust the, thr um, adjust the thrust control is very useful. We're going to take um, two, key, uh, two points of that. Uh, atmo atmospheric brakes are very useful. We're going to take two points of that. We don't have retro engines in our builds early on, so we're going to leave that. Um, these are all uh, very useful. Uh, uh, indeed, again, so your adjusters have more power when you, you place them down, but we're not going to go uh, for that yet. I recommend using vertical boosters, even though they use space fuel, which is much more expensive, and they use more fuel than their equivalent, which is a hover engine that uses atmospheric fuel. But their advantage is that they give more thrust, I think, per engine. And also, they work whether or not you're in atmosphere. Whereas an atmospheric th a hover engine only works in atmosphere. So, for instance, if you're out mining on a moon without atmosphere, you'll have no vertical lift. So, I would recommend going down um, the vertical booster line. So, more max thrust. And then... Height management makes it so that your vertical boosters engage at a higher height. We're actually going to take that to level three because it's so important. If you remember when I was heavy and I was coming down on the hover engines, I was worried that the hover engines would not engage in time to slow me down enough not to smash into the ground. The higher point at which your vertical boosters engage the more time they have to slow you down. So when you're heavily laden with ore from mining, they help you land safer and they help you take off safer because you can lift up higher off the ground when you're taking off and clear obstacles in your way. And then more uh, space engine, uh, you know, spool up time reductions, max thrust, etc. Uh, we're not going to go with rocket engines for now. Rocket engines are very expensive. And then that's it. If you have some time, you can maybe spec into making your uh, industry a tad more efficient. Uh, that's always very useful. So, you know, uh, electronics industry, um, 
crafting time isn't as useful as uh, efficiency. So, yeah, sorry, no, this is still crafting time. Where is what we're looking for? Uh, crafting, yes, so productivity. So space fuel productivity. If you have this skill per point, you get 5% more output from your factories if you're the one who clicked craft. And then efficiency here, I think it's still crafting time. Yeah, refining speed. But yes, productivity and manufacturer makes it so you get... Um, uh, no, these are efficiency still. Where is it? Ah, yeah, there we go. Carbon ore refining. 3% less materials input when you get carbon ore out. So you can link this uh, refining with productivity to have, say, at this point here, you know, three times four, 12% less ore in, and you know, four, uh, five percent times four, 20% more carbon ore out. And you can do that with every step of the production process. So some organizations have one person dedicated to refining carbon, one person dedicated to refining aluminium, one person dedicated to making an alloy out of those, you know, one person dedicated to make taking that alloy and making components out of those, you know, one person dedicated to taking those components and making items out of those. And so they're highly efficient. But even though we can't compete with them in efficiency, we still uh, want to aim for self-sufficiency and being able to produce anything we want in the game. And that's a brief talk through um, our talent tree while we waited for our Thank you for watching part two of these video guides. Next time we're going to be going through how we're going to put our ship together for getting around and our process for selecting and claiming territory on the Sanctuary Moon and our setup base on Alioth. If you're enjoying this content, please do consider subscribing to the channel or following me on Twitch. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.